in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. Jerome a living and tender love for sacred scripture, grant that your people may be ever more fruitfully nourished by your word and find it in the fount of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered his friends and said, I know well that it is so, but how can a man be justified before God? Should one wish to contend with him? He could not answer him once in a thousand times. God is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has withstood him and remained unscathed. He removes the mountains before they know it. He overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place, and the pillars beneath it tremble. He commands the sun, and it rises not. He seals up the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads upon the crests of the sea. He made the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the constellations of the south. He does great things past finding out, marvelous things beyond reckoning. Should he come near me, I see him not. Should he pass by, I am not aware of him. Should he seize me forcibly, who can say him nay? Who can say to him, what are you doing? How much less shall I give him any answer, or choose out arguments against him? Even though I were right, I could not answer him, but should rather beg for what was due me. If I appealed to him and he answered my call, I could not believe that he would hearken to my words. The Word of the Lord Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Daily I call upon you, O Lord. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work wonders for the dead? Will the shades arise to give you thanks? Do they declare your mercy in the grave? your faithfulness among those who have perished? Are your wonders made known in the darkness or your justice in the land of oblivion? But I, O Lord, cry out to you. With my morning prayer, I wait upon you. Why, 
O Lord, do you reject me? Why hide from me your face? Let's all stand to honor the Holy Gospel. I consider all things so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Follow me. These are the words of Jesus in today's gospel. But really, today's gospel reading gives us three incidents, three separate incidents on discipleship. If you may have noticed, in both the first and the third account, it is the individual person who expressed their desire to follow Jesus. In the case of the first, when he said, I will follow you, Jesus seemed to caution his would-be follower and reminded him about the cost of discipleship. To this man who seemed excited to become a disciple of Jesus, Jesus had to remind him that discipleship can be physically inconvenient. And if he wished to follow the Lord, he must therefore be prepared to give up material goods and personal comforts. In the case of the third person who expressed his desire to follow Jesus, the Lord would give him a kind of a warning about the temptations that come with being a disciple. And what, what are these temptations? The first temptation is to defer the decision to follow the Lord. It is a temptation to put off until tomorrow what could be done today. We can make excuses about why we should not decide today. It can be our work. It can be our concern. And this is where the second temptation comes in. That is, to think that our duty towards our family, to think that family obligations will excuse us from fulfilling our duty towards God. It is not so. It does not mean that we, do, we should neglect our obligation towards our family because the fact is 
while we indeed have duties towards our families, we also have our duty towards God. And at some point, we have to make the decision to fulfill our duty towards God, even if at times it can hinder our fulfillment of our duty towards our family. A more interesting development is there seems to be a twist in the second incident in today's gospel. Because in the second incident, it is Jesus who invites the person. In the previous incidents, it was the individual who would present themselves to Jesus. I will follow you. They were the ones who expressed their desire to follow Jesus. But in the second account, it is Jesus who gives the invitation. Follow me. The person invited hesitated. Yes, I will. But first, let me bury my father. Perhaps he eventually followed the Lord. We really, we really do not know. What we only know is that it was Jesus himself who personally invited him. Brothers and sisters, discipleship, it is our response to the call of God. Because it is a response, it presupposes a call. Alam kung masabat ka, walang ang ganing gatawag sa imo. Masabat ka, kay gatawag, may gatawag sa imo. Discipleship is a response. It presupposes a call. And the call can come in different forms. Just like the three incidents in today's gospel, it may come in the form of a personal invitation. It may come also in the form of an attraction. It can come in the form of an interest. Different forms, but the same invitation. Whatever form it may be, the call comes from the Lord. We simply respond to the call. It is God who makes the first move. Theology calls it divine initiative. It is always God who makes the first move. It is always God who invites us because it is God who has first loved us. That is why He invites us so that we can share, we can enjoy the love that He has for us. Today's Gospel reminds us that discipleship is our response to the love that God has shown us. Discipleship then as a response is the consequence of loving. Discipleship is the consequence of being in love. A disciple who is not in love cannot be a real disciple. He can only be somebody who can comply but there is no conviction because he does not have the experience of being called by somebody who has first loved him. Discipleship, following Jesus, it is the consequence of being loved by Jesus. And this love attracts us. This love invites us. Why? Because it is this love that will heal us it is this love that will strengthen us. It is this love that will make us whole, enabling us to go through our own difficulties and challenges in life. My dear brothers and sisters, today is the last day of our preparation for the Feast of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. And St. Therese tells us her story is a telling of her own discovery and experience of who God is. For St. Therese, God is merciful love. This is what she teaches us. And faithful to the message of the Gospel, St. Therese brings us to the heart of who God is. This God who is revealed to us in Jesus is merciful love. Mercy and love are not just attributes of God. Mercy 
and love are not just descriptions of God. Mercy and love are in fact the nature of God. Follow me. These are the words of Jesus in today's Gospel. And St. Therese, echoing the words of the Gospel, reminds us that we must remain rooted in God. We must remain rooted in God who is merciful love. Jesus in today's Gospel invites us to come follow me in order that we may experience the power of His love in our lives. Jesus tells us, come follow me, because it is His way of telling, come, be strengthened by me, stay close to my side, and have strength in me. Brothers and sisters, our times are challenging, our times are unique, these are difficult times, and many of us are afraid. Many of us are uncertain about the future. We do not really know how long this will take. And in the midst of this, we hear the words of Jesus echoed by little Therese. Come, stay close to me. Come, be rooted in me. Let us take inspiration from St. Therese. Let us remain little. Let our confidence be in our littleness. Let us bring before the Lord our fears and our anxieties. Let us bring to Him our uncertainties. And as we bring this poverty of ours, like St. Therese, let us remain confident before the Lord. From where does our confidence come from? Let us take confidence in the truth that we are loved beyond all measure. It is this love that will strengthen and encourage us. It is this love that will help us to strengthen ourselves so that we too can strengthen and encourage one another. In this Eucharistic celebration, we will encounter God who has allowed himself to become little. God in the bread and wine. God under the appearance of bread and wine. The powerful God becoming so little for us so that as we partake of him and receive him, we too may be strengthened and healed and encouraged by him. Let us encounter God in the second mysteries. Amen. With the confident trust which Saint Therese had in God's merciful love, let us bring our needs to the Father and implore His unfailing help as we all pray. Hear us, Lord, as we place all our trust in You. Hear us, Lord, as we place all our trust in You. May the Church and all spiritual leaders be imbued with the fervent missionary spirit of Saint Therese as they proclaim the good news to all peoples and be the visible sign of God's abiding love and presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we place all our trust in you. For our diocese, our beloved bishop, and all our clergy, may their efforts to help us make sense of the great suffering the whole human family is experiencing bear fruits of true conversion of heart and solicitous concern for one another and for Mother Earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we place all our trust in you. May our government leaders be given the light to realize that their power and authority is a divine gift 
that is meant for humble service for the welfare of the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we place all our trust in you. May the fire of love that consumed St. Therese all enkindle the heart of all Carmel communities so that their hidden life of prayer, sacrifice, and fraternal charity offered for all may truly strengthen the life of the Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we place all our trust in you. May we echo with St. Therese her deep conviction that everything is grace, and may her little way of humble acknowledgement of total dependence on God and extraordinary love in doing ordinary things, dispositions that powerfully draw down God's mercy be passed on to us as we go through this time of adversity. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord as we place all our trust in you. May St. Therese promise to spend her heaven doing good on earth and to let fall a shower of roses be especially felt by those who are most tried and vulnerable in our present health and economic crisis, our frontliners, the sick and all COVID patients, the jobless and the daily wage earners, and the poor who have nothing to subsist on. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we place all our trust in you. You are the hope and the joy of those who have gone before us. Bring all the faithful departed to the eternal vision of your glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, as we place all our trust in you. We also pray for the intentions of all those whom we have promised to pray for and for the people who are having difficulty in this situation that we are in right now. For them, we pray. Fortify us, Lord, in faith, hope, and love that with St. Teresa's example of total surrender to you in all things, we may receive all the graces we ask for according to your loving will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. May the mystery of this offering may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Let us Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you. May our family be pleasing.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Grant us, O Lord, that having meditated on your word, following the example of St. Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Jerome, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricia, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments. And never let me be parted from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
the body of Christ.
let us pray. May these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, as we rejoice in celebrating St. Jerome, stir up the hearts of your faithful, so that attentive to sacred teachings, they may understand the path they are to follow, and by following it, obtain life everlasting through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tridome Prayer to St. Therese O our holy little sister, St. Therese, who, who by, by your fidelity, fidelity to grace has attained, attained the summit of sanctity in the present tragic situation, when, when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, turn towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died. Be close to those whose loved ones are infected, yet cannot be close to them. Fill with hope those who are troubled by uncertainty and have lost their jobs in a failing economy. Our little Saint Therese, pray for us to God, the Father of mercies, that this great suffering may end, and that hope and peace may dawn on you. May the sick and their families be comforted. Protect the doctors, nurses, and health workers who are on the front line of this emergency and who risk their lives to save others. Be close to those who assist the sick night and day, and to priests who continue their pastoral ministry to serve the sick and everyone. Pray that the Holy Spirit may illumine the minds of those engaged in scientific research to find effective cure to overcome this virus. Support national leaders that with wisdom, solicitude, and generosity, they may address the basic needs of their suffering people and devise social and economic solutions to help them survive. Beloved sister, help us to realize that we are all members of one great family, that in a spirit of fraternity and solidarity, we can alleviate situations of poverty and need, make us strong in faith, persevering in service, and constant in prayer. Saint Therese, embrace the legions of little souls in distress, and pray that God will stretch out His all-powerful hand and free us from this terrible pandemic, so that life can serenely resume its normal course. To you who shine on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope, do we entrust ourselves as you point us to the sure way of littleness and the path of confidence and love. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Bless be to God.